Dear friends, welcome to yet another installment of Orbital Geek. In this video, we dive into the backstage of Neuralink, Elon Musk's company, in search of a revolutionary brain-computer interface. We unveil the challenges faced, such as electrode retraction and safety issues. We introduce Benjamin Rappaport, former Neuralink founder, and his new company, Precision Neuroscience, which developed a less invasive and potentially safer technology. We compare the approaches of the two companies and their implications for the future of neurotechnology. Is Elon Musk hiding something about Neuralink? And who will really lead the brain-computer interface revolution? Watch until the end to understand what's at stake in this technological race and form your own opinion. Elon Musk's Neuralink brain implant is pushing the boundaries of what modern neuroscience can achieve. I think we can all agree on that, but the company may also be overstepping the limits of what is considered safe or even possible in the field of brain-computer interface technologies. Your comment is extremely valuable to us. It helps the algorithm recommend our videos to more people, which is crucial for our channel's growth, especially at the beginning of this journey. If you can, leave a comment, even if it's just a simple, hello. Your participation makes all the difference. Neuralink is in a delicate position now, as it begins to face the realities of human experimentation. Amidst all this, a new competitor is emerging. A spectre from Elon Musk's past has returned to take the throne with a better and safer brain implant. This could be a problem. Let's start with a story. This is Benjamin Rappaport. You probably don't recognize him, but he was one of the nine founders of Neuralink in 2017. Elon Musk claims he interviewed over a thousand people before deciding on the team of eight doctors, scientists, and engineers who would join him in creating a new brain implant technology. Looking at Ben's resume, it's easy to understand why he was chosen. A master's degree in physics and mathematics from Harvard, a master of science from Oxford, a doctorate in engineering from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and a medical degree from Harvard Medical School. He was working as a resident neurosurgeon in the years leading up to the creation of Neuralink. So, all of this is crucial to demonstrate that Benjamin Rappaport is not just another technology enthusiast. He brings immense credibility to the scene. Therefore, when we mention that Benjamin left Neuralink in March 2018, just one year after the company was presented to the public, we understand that this decision is significant. The main reason for his departure is also the key to our story today. Safety. Without delving into the details of how brain-computer interfaces work, we know that the brain is teeming with electrical activity. Everything you do, feel and know begins with trillions of electrical signals jumping across billions of neurons in the grey matter of the human brain. This has been known for a hundred years. Hans Berger began his experiments with electroencephalography in 1924, but even after a century of observation, the human brain remains enigmatic. We know that the best clues to unravel our mystery are found closer to the source, inside the human skull. We can observe brain activity from the outside by placing electrodes on the scalp, but the signals are dampened. Imagine you're living in an apartment and your neighbor is having a party. You can try to listen through the wall and that will provide some information about what's happening. You can perceive the type of music they're listening to, the approximate size of the group, if they're laughing or arguing. Imagine that the people at the party are neurons in a human brain. Observing them through a wall or a skull, you can measure the general mood of the party, but you'll never know the details of what's happening in there. But if you could go through the door and enter the room, suddenly there would be infinitely more details to learn about the party. You'd hear the music clearly, see the people, know what they're saying. And once there, you could step forward and get closer to a neuron and start a conversation. From there, there are no limits to what you can learn. All of this is a metaphor for the invasiveness of the brain-computer interface. But instead of opening a door, we have to cut through skin and bone. And to start that personal conversation with a neuron, we need to penetrate brain matter. All of this comes at a cost. We know that Elon Musk prefers simplicity in design, but seeks grandeur in performance. His cars are the fastest, his rockets the most powerful, and his approach with Neuralink follows the same pattern. Elon wouldn't be content just to observe. He dives straight into the mission of exploring neurons as closely as possible. The price of an invasive brain implant will always be the risk of brain damage. There's no way to avoid physical damage when penetrating brain tissue. 
The first invasive brain implant emerged in the early 2000s, the Utah Array, developed by BlackRock Neuroscience. Imagine a tiny bed of nails that pierces the outer cortex of the brain with small, rigid pins. The implant depth is usually about one and a half millimeters, and these devices are known to cause scarring and material rejection by the brain, making them unviable as long-term permanent solutions. Once scarring forms, communication with neurons is drastically reduced. This is the main challenge that Neuralink tried to overcome with its own BCI design, using ultra-thin and ultra-flexible threads to connect with brain tissue. The idea was that these microscopic threads would transmit electrode connections to the brain so gently that the body wouldn't perceive it, thus avoiding implant rejection or scar formation. This theory may prove true, but so far it has been ineffective in maintaining a stable connection with the brain. Neuralink's first patient, Nolan Arbor, underwent successful implantation of 64 Neuralink threads. These threads transmitted a total of 1,024 individual electrodes directly to his brain cortex, a procedure performed in late January 2024. By February, 85% of these threads had retracted from the brain. They fell out. This is a problem that Neuralink may have already expected. Several anonymous sources, claiming to work for the company, told Reuters that thread retraction was a constant problem in tests with monkeys and pigs for years. This account was not confirmed, but it wouldn't be surprising, given the severity of the retraction problem with Nolan's implant. It would be strange if this had occurred for the first time so many years after the testing phase. What's even more concerning is that Nolan claimed he was never informed about the possibility of thread retraction. He was completely surprised when the problem occurred. Neuralink claims to have a solution, approved by the FDA, but it's not exactly an ideal fix. And this directly relates to Benjamin Rappaport's concerns about patient safety in this field. The original Utah Array, with its small rigid pins, penetrated one to two millimeters deep into the brain. Neuralink went further, with its flexible threads reaching depths between three and five millimeters in Nolan's brain. But this didn't prove effective, so the new plan is to insert the threads eight millimeters deep in Neuralink's second human patient. For those who have difficulty visualizing what a millimeter is, eight millimeters is a little less than a third of an inch. So, this is getting quite deep. Neuralink started with double the industry standard and now intends to double that again. And twice the depth means twice the potential for brain matter damage, twice the potential for negative side effects. It's not yet as deep as other current electrode procedures, such as deep brain stimulation, for example, but it's still very unknown what kind of damage 64 insertions, each eight millimeters deep in a relatively small segment of the brain, can cause. It's also unknown if this change will solve the problem for Neuralink. If we still see thread retraction in the next patient, it's possible that Neuralink's design, as innovative as it may be, simply doesn't work. Obviously, this is not the kind of outcome that a business leader like Elon Musk will easily accept. But in science, there's always the potential to be proven wrong. It's the reason we conduct experiments in the first place. There's a very real potential that Neuralink is just another idea that's excellent in theory, but doesn't work in practice. History is full of these failed ideas, and it's an outcome for which we must be prepared. What if you didn't need to penetrate the brain eight millimeters, or three millimeters, or even one millimeter? What if all the necessary information could be obtained just by going through the party door without advancing further than that? This is the question that Benjamin Rappaport left Neuralink to investigate, and perhaps he has already found the answer. This is the layer seven cortical interface. It's an ultra-thin film array just one-fifth the thickness of a human hair, covered by 1,024 tiny electrode sensors. It was designed to rest on top of your brain, eavesdropping on all your neurons' conversations without causing any physical damage. It seems like an interesting proposition. Layer 7 was created by Precision Neuroscience, a company you've probably never heard of. This company was founded by Benjamin Rappaport after his departure from Neuralink. And this thin film array is the safest and least invasive BCI technology he envisioned in 2018. One that Elon Musk would have considered inferior for not penetrating deep into the neurons. But, in reality, the opposite has proven to be true. While Neuralink's total electrode count in human trials fell over time from 1,024 to just 154, precision has advanced. 
They started with one cortical interface and then added a second to the same patient, totaling 248 electrodes. This was last summer. Recently, in April 2024, Precision set a new record with four interfaces implanted in a human brain, totaling 4,096 electrodes, all reading brain signals simultaneously. The thin film array is designed to be implanted through a small slit cut in the patient's skull. Then, the electrodes are slid between the brain and its outer protective layer, called the dura mater. The thin and flexible nature of the array allows it to perfectly adjust to the wrinkled shape of the brain cortex, like a plastic film. A wireless transmitter is then placed under the user's skin, connecting to the electrodes and transmitting the neural signal wirelessly via Bluetooth. With such a small and thin cut in the skull, just one millimeter wide, multiple arrays can be placed in different brain regions without compromising the integrity of the patient's skull. Multiple Neuralinks could be implanted, but the skull would quickly start to look like Swiss cheese, full of holes. Precision has already tested its Layer 7 cortical interface with 14 human patients over the past three years. This is possible because the thin film array is so easy and harmless to place and remove from the brain that the procedure can be incorporated into any routine neural surgery. Precision simply finds a case where a patient is already undergoing open brain surgery, such as for the removal of a benign tumor or treatment of Parkinson's disease. They then place their array on the surface of the patient's exposed brain and start recording data. In some of these cases, the patient remains awake throughout the procedure, participating in motion capture activities that map the physical movement of hands and fingers to electrical signals in the brain. This is a great advantage for precision that Neuralink cannot match at this time. Neuralink is advancing only with implants in people with total body paralysis, limiting their research to imagined movement, unable to capture their patient's physical movement simultaneously. When precision obtains its data, they simply remove the array from the patient's brain and sew their head back up without leaving any trace that the BCI was there. The company has already managed to prove that it's not necessary to penetrate the brain to collect high-resolution data from neurons. Surrounding the skull is enough. Being very close to the surface of the brain matter is still effective, or at least sufficient for any practical medical reason. Perhaps Neuralink still needs to insert wires into people to realize Elon's vision of merging the human brain with AI, whatever that means. But if our goal is to help people with disabilities and illnesses live better lives, it has already been proven that we don't need to drill holes in their skulls or damage their brains for that. Thus, in many ways, what Precision has achieved here was to drastically reduce the entry barrier for brain-computer interfaces, much more than Neuralink ever could. And innovations like this are precisely the kind of development that will make brain-computer interfaces one of the biggest stories of the next decade. In conclusion, the race for the ideal brain-computer interface is far from over. While Neuralink bets on an invasive and ambitious approach, Precision Neuroscience adopts a more conservative and potentially safer strategy. Science reveals to us that both approaches have their merits and challenges. Neuralink seeks a deeper connection, in a literal and figurative sense, but faces significant obstacles. Precision, on the other hand, demonstrates that sometimes less is more, offering promising results with lower risk. The future of neurotechnology will depend not only on technical effectiveness, but also on safety, ethics, and public acceptance. The question that remains is, are we willing to drill into our brains in search of technological advancement, or will the less invasive solution prevail? And you, which side are you on in this brain battle? Leave your opinion in the comments about which approach you think will dominate the future of brain-computer interfaces. Your brain appreciates your participation.